Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth, and I own Fitness Junkie Training, where I've helped hundreds of busy men transform their lives, both physically and mentally. And today I'm joined by an extremely badass guest. Once again, we've got George Wright on the podcast. And this man has an awesome background. He's worked with some big names. He's worked with Tony Robbins, uh, Robert Kawasaki, um, and he owns the Daily Mastermind, which is a podcast. Uh, love some of the stuff this man talks about. We already connected quite a bit before the podcast. So extremely happy to have you on, George. I appreciate you. And uh, let's dive right into it, sir. So my first question for you is, what do you think sets successful people apart from unsuccessful people? Oh, that's a great question. Hey, listen, and I, and I want to just say before we get going, man, I appreciate you having me on. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I spent a lot of time kind of, um, you know, checking you out and what was going on and you've got some, you've got some amazing things happening. So I'm, I'm super pumped about this. You know, that that's literally a question that's kind of driven most of what I've done most of my life. Cause I've always been looking, I've always been a big fan of personal development and looking for successful things. And then I got into the business as a marketer because my, my whole background is marketing marketing all these big name brands and 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 speakers and thought leaders and authors. And so I've always been really kind of looking at that. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's changed over, over the years, but I'm a firm believer right now that what really sets someone apart in success is their mindset. Um, you know, it, it reminds me just um, of a real quick story. You know, I used to do events all over the world, um, tens of thousands of people. And I was at this event in, in Asia with T. Harv Eker, who wrote The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And, you know, we're looking out there and they're actually translating it, right? So they, they, he, he's speaking in English and they're translating it in Chinese. And first of all, that blew me away that people all over the world are, are about mindset and personal development. But I remember asking him, I'm like, man, there's all these people learning the exact same things. Why, why, why is it two people can learn the same principles and one's successful and one's not? And he looked at me and he goes, George, you know, it's just, it really is, it's that inner game. You know, if you don't have the mindset right, you will not be able to really truly apply all the principles. And so I, I believe, Kate, I, I believe it's mindset. No question. 100%. And we, we already connected on this <clears throat> when we spoke before the podcast. But yeah, I, I was saying, I think it's the exact same thing I see with fitness, you know, with my fitness clients. It's what, what sets apart because some people are extremely successful. They make crazy transformations and they make a ton of fitness progress. Some people not so much, right? And it's it's all right here. And it's all, you know, what you're creating in your mind. It's what you believe. And if you believe that you can achieve the goals, that's that's the number one thing, I think. Right. So I don't, I don't know if you agree with finances. Yeah, bro brother, you, you, you've got it right on the head because, you know, that's part of my whole company evolution. It's mind, body, money, business and lifestyle. And it's always about mindset. And, and you're training people to do physical things and and perform better at an elite level with their body and their mind. And, you know, as well as I do. Nobody likes getting up to work out. Nobody likes, you know, eating right. Nobody like, but you you have to discipline your mind to be able to do these things. And mental discipline is, is everything. Without it, you could know all the strategies and you will never have success. So you're you're right. And you've seen this as well. So I think that's why we connected at a at a real high level, man. It's 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 the difference maker for people for sure. Mindset. Hundred percent. Yeah. And and one thing I coach my clients on a whole lot is also like limiting beliefs with their mindset. What do yeah. you, what do you think are some limiting beliefs with financial success that people have that they can work on? To you know what? Um, it, it's funny you say that because I'm a big believer and you hear this all the time. Tony talks about it. A lot of people talk about limiting beliefs. I believe that as you get older, um, you know, it, it's not what you think you want to do. It's what you believe you can do. And your beliefs are what are going to put this filter on top of anything you want to do, right? That's why we keep telling ourselves, I'm going to do this, and then you don't. What's well, because deep down, you really don't believe it. And I, and I believe the limiting belief most people have is that they're, that they're able or, or capable of creating more. I think that everything about life kind of holds them back. And so, you know, what you have to do with that is you have to overcome the story that you're telling yourself and the story that, you know, I've, I've had ups and downs, I've had failures, you know, this is what people think of me, all those things, which are all crap. You have to learn to overcome a limiting belief because every bit of your success is, is just beyond your biggest limiting belief, right? Yeah. So I do think your personal confidence yeah. is a big limiting belief. Yeah. And then I think people run into those problems with, can I do this? Can I do that? Well, 
you know as well as I do nowadays, shit, you, you could do anything if you just Google it. Like you, you could do anything, but you have to mentally wrestle with that limiting belief, right? So I, I do think that self-confidence is a big one that holds people back. For sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, some people, they start off, you know, maybe their their parents aren't financially successful. They, they grew up with these certain beliefs. I think there's a lot of like mindsets around money that are like, instilled on us at a young age and you've got to like reprogram your mind uh to yeah you, you know it, it it reminds me of a couple things that we've trained on quite a bit and that is you know like harv ecker used to say um give me like five minutes and i can predict your financial future because your future financially will be dependent on what your blueprint is so your mental blueprint it's like a thermostat, right? If you believe you're only, you know, when it comes to money, you only believe a certain thing, you'll never get up there because you'll you'll make more money and it'll bring you back down. It's like when you set a thermostat at your house, you can go and turn temperature up all you want, but it'll come back to where the thermostat is set. So if your your beliefs around money are that money doesn't grow on trees, that money is evil, that money is um, something that only other people can have, that money is hard to get, that you got to grind for money. Those are all, they're all wrong beliefs. And so your belief around money is going to determine what you can accomplish with money for sure. Yeah. Some, some things that I've had to work on and reprogram myself with was one, I, I feel like I've just got a scarcity mindset and yeah. the thing that helped me kind of flip that. And I'd like to know your thoughts on this is, you know, instead of always thinking, how can I save, save, save as much money as possible, like saving my way to, to reach my financial goals. It's like, literally just thinking about, I can actually just find ways to make more money, like increase my income. And that excites me more. And it's, it's like, yeah, and then I'm not feeling like I'm stifling my lifestyle all the time. Um, and it, you know, I, I don't know, that was just a mindset shift. Oh, no. you, man, you, you hit it right on the head. Here's the thing, successful people, um, financially successful, even, you know, happiness level, think in abundance, not in scarcity. And, and the thing is, most people don't realize their scarcity mindset. Take even working out at the gym. People are like, I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. It's all scarcity mindset. If you're like, I am getting in shape. I am in the best. For, I'm making progress. That's an abundant mindset. Right. Well, abundance is going to attract more abundance. You know, scarcity is going to attract more scarcity. So when you're like, man, I don't know if I have enough money to invest in myself. I don't have enough money to, you know, pay for a personal trainer. I don't have a money for a mentor. Hey, guess what? Your complete scarcity mindset. People, you know, and I'm not talking about unrealistic things. I'm just saying what you know in your life about money has formed certain beliefs or even in life, certain beliefs, limiting beliefs. And if you got to meet someone else that's super, it's why you get around people that you can get that belief transference from. When you're around people that are super successful, do you ever feel like, man, like that, that guy makes it look easy. Um, I think I could do it. You get that belief transference when you're around the right people and it helps you get past all those kind of like limiting beliefs, right? That's one of the reasons why I'm doing these podcasts is get, get yeah. in front of people that have like-minded mindsets. And when you're just always, you know, around these type of people like you, George is like, yeah, it, it, it levels up your mindset, right? It's like, well, and you're, but you're more of abundant thinker, Yeah, you know, I mean, you can't get around people that are successful and happy and fulfilled and building and progressing and not be feeling more abundant. Like right. you, you, you now when you're around the crowd, you're around, look, you're the average of the five people you're around, right? So if you're around the same people that you're all probably around the same thing, if you do what you're saying is level up, you're going to think better. You're going to think bigger and have a bigger vision and more abundant mindset. So you're right. Abundant mindset is a huge piece of being successful, both mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, like everything, right? 100%. Yeah. And it man, I love what you said about like, even saying I, I want to lose weight, like I need to lose weight. I, I think that is kind of a, you know, it's how can I get in the best shape of my life? Like re rewording it can make, it's a subtle difference, but it makes it more of an abundance um, type of mindset than, than scarcity. Yeah, I like what you said there. Never yeah. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, so there's one little strategy that I'll use. Cause look, everyone at every level, I'm telling you this, even some of the biggest people you guys know that you follow online, your listeners, I can tell you they struggle with imposter syndrome. I could tell you they struggle with confidence because I'm the guy that was marketing them. I know the behind the scenes stuff, but here's what they do just a little differently. And it's part of that abundance mindset. You know, you can't sit here and tell yourself affirmations like I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. And I mean, in your mind, you're saying you're full, of, you know, your BS, right? But if you can shift slightly to say, 
what's the future version of yourself you're trying to become, whether it's physically, financially, whatever. And you say, I am that person. I start seeing myself as that person. It's a more abundant mindset. I am in shape. I am this. You're not saying you are. You're saying that you are because you see and believe the future version of yourself. It's abundant mindset, but it also helps you to believe it more. See, our, we don't, you know, we're, we're smart enough creatures that we know when we're lying to ourselves. Like I'm, I'm super successful and in shape. No, you're not. You're, you know, you're out of shape, you know, but, but if you can see the future version of yourself, what's going to happen is you can believe that. And guess what? It's going to pull you towards that future in an abundant way. And that's, that's, that's the secret. A lot of these big, big dogs use, man. They just, they see the person that they're becoming and they see themselves as that person. And that's how they become successful. I love it. Yeah. And I think one of the best ways to improve that confidence in like proving to yourself that you can be that person is by stacking those wins um, to, yeah. to show yourself that you're becoming that person. So I know that we both, I, I say this to my clients almost, I think I say it every single morning, like go stack yeah, up yeah. your wins. And I saw that, you know, with some of your podcast stuff, you've talked about stacking wins. So I wanted to ask you, like, if you could just speak on your version, kind of your perspective of what it means to you to stack wins. Yeah, you know, look, I'm a big David Goggins fan. Um, you know, when he talks about how most of us are only playing at about 40% of our capacity, the problem is we all believe we're at 100% of our capacity. And so how do you get past this? Confidence is the number one issue most people have. If they were more confident they could do something, they'd do it, right? And if you did it, even if you failed, you're going to be making progress and doing more and more. So I always say, look, maybe you can't say, I'm going to set this big goal and feel confident you can hit it. But you've got to learn to recognize that you've already won over and over and over in life, right? You, you're here, you, you're moving forward, you're listening to this podcast, you're already doing the things you want to do. So in order to gain confidence, sometimes it helps to just stack the wins. And so I believe you have to train your mind for success. Well, what's success? I got out of bed early. I went to the gym. It's not, you know, I didn't do as good a workout as I want. It's like, I, I, I just stack the wins in the day, which means you won the day. You win enough days, you win the week, you win enough weeks. So it's like, I got up, I, I, I read, I drank my water, I, I worked out. Um, you can, and here's the thing, even when you have bad days, you can always find wins. Remember, the game is to train yourself to recognize the wins yeah. and stack the wins. And if you don't look for them, look, all day long, we're stacking wins. It's like, hey, I had a great call today. Hey, I did this. I met a new person. I did. But you have to learn to stack those wins. And when you stack enough, look, I don't care what anybody says. Confidence grows when you look and you go, well, crap, man, I'm, I'm stacking a lot of wins right now. Like I'm winning. Right. When you feel like you're winning, you'll feel like a winner, period. So, right? That's what I think, at least. Yeah. No, man, we, we have such in line... <laughs> perspectives on some things it's funny because your 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 mindset towards financial success is like you know I, it's my mindset i think kind of that i adopted for fitness but now it's kind of transferring to other things but yeah. man, we're just we're so in line we're so resonating on these things and um yeah i think with the stack and wins a lot of times for me you know it, it's in the morning kind of like winning the beginning of the day and it creates that momentum kind of like you're saying and it builds that confidence um and i think you mentioned david goggins like he talks about his cookie jar. So like, yep. you know, kind of going back to his cookie jar, that's like, you know, what have you done to kind of that you can go back to and kind of like have confidence yeah. and feel good about yourself. Um, and so the thing is we've all got those, but we're not used to recognizing them. So it's one of the reasons why I, I'm a big fan like you, like win the morning, you win the day. Um, you're on track, you're on momentum. But I'm also a big fan at night before you go to sleep and you got all this like, you know, stuff that's going to roll around in your head. Yeah. Um, write down and recognize the wins. That's why I just do like a quick journaling. I just use a free day one journal. Um, but I always stack a few wins down. It's like, okay, what did I do really well today? How did I do it? When you do that and you leave your, you close your mind off with that abundance, it's good. But if you don't actually, we all have them, but if we don't identify the wins, like Goggin says, you won't be able to draw on them later. Yes. So it's huge. 100%. Yeah. And, and yeah, if you're just always trying to seek out those wins, I think that's, that's part of it. Like seek out the wins instead of like, you know, some people, it goes back to the abundance or scarcity mindset. You can either be thinking about like what went wrong today. And if you do that, you're just going to be a negative mindset. Things are, you know, you, the world is as you see it, the world yeah. is as it is. Right. So you can change right. perspective and change the world. So yeah, if you, if you can seek out the positivity, seek out what to be grateful for, 100%. Like your, your mindset's going to level up. I, I yeah, that. remember, it's a game of training your mind to 
find success training. That's why people that view failure, it's like it not as failure because they see the, they see what they learned from the failure. That's yeah. a win. Yeah. Failure is a failure, but learning something from a failure means you just had a win. So like, how, how, how can, how can you be anything else? And you know what it's like when you feel like you're a winner, you're winning. Like you <laughs> winners win. Yeah. That's why they say that losers lose because they just focus on losing and they lose more. Right. hundred percent, man, man. I, one, one thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, you've talked about how personal development in itself isn't enough. So, you know, what do people really need? You know, I, I grew up my life around personal development. You probably know people that have been around personal development. They're, you know, seminar junkies or they've, they've read every book or they've done all this and they don't feel like they're getting anywhere. I really believe it's because they don't do two things. Number one, personal development without application, without doing it, without, without moving and learning and growing and new experiences and new beliefs isn't going to get you anywhere. Um, it's why, you know, the law of attract, the secret, I don't know if you saw that a long time, like this, this big, the secret, the law of attraction, people are like, I'm going to manifest and visualize my life and everything, but they're not doing anything. Like right. you have to apply it. There's, there's an application process. And I think the other thing is that even with some of the greatest personal development, you know, experiences you may have breakthroughs you have, if you don't create long-term habits, you know, you're going to ride the waves of life. And so you have to apply the personal development and then you have to create that's why I'm a big fan of daily rituals because daily rituals will become habits. Will be it will take you through even when you don't feel like having you know the right mindset. Um, but I think sometimes people feel like I'm doing everything I need to do, my affirmations, my meditation, I'm working. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, it's like uh, Bob Proctor says it's the law of attraction, but there's this whole other level of law of vibration, which is what are you doing and how are you living your life to apply these things. Otherwise you're never going to attract all that into your life. But I am a big believer that you can attract a lot into your life, but you, you know, personal development by itself is not going to help you. Yeah, I agree because I think it starts with the mindset, right? That's where it starts. Right. That, that just gets you in the, in the ballpark that just gets you in the game. Right. But if you have to start there and then you've got to create the right habits, um, you know, but it, you know, create that mindset, then create the right habits that are the actions that are going to create that person you're trying to become. Right. Because Yeah. Yeah. And I think that personal development, I've expanded my my view of it in the past. For me, it used to be like getting your mindset right. And now I'm like, it's personally growing physically. It's personally growing financially. It's personally growing with yeah. your wealth and with your relationships. And if you're personally developing, I like to really use the term more like personal mastery. You're yeah. trying to create the best version of yourself. Well, you notice they don't just say you're not learning all the stuff. You're learning and applying and and yeah. building those disciplines and becoming a better version of yourself. And that's, that's personal mastery in my yeah. opinion. A hundred percent. And that's why I always, we'll get to it in a little bit, you know, later on in the podcast, I, I always try to tell the listeners like, you know, don't just listen, we're going to put something into action immediately. And we'll kind of get, you know, what you want uh, later on with that to, <clears throat> to challenge the yeah. listeners to do. Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree. It's like, you, you got to put it into action right away. That's why a lot of times when I read now, it's like, I'll, I'll learn one thing and then I'll either like make a post about what I just learned or like, I'll put it into practice in my life right away. It's like, don't just read, right. to read, don't just consume content to consume content, like consume the content to put it into practice immediately. So I, I yeah. completely agree with that. Um, man, I was going to ask something else kind of piggybacking off of that, but uh, maybe I'll think of it here in a second, but I do want to talk to you about mentors um, and you already kind of mentioned it briefly, um, but you've, you've said that, you know, you believe in the power of mentoring and I, I hundred percent do as well. I think I'm a product of mentorship in a lot of different areas. I've talked about it a lot online, um, but who have been some of your most influential mentors kind of, what have you learned? And um, if you could just kind of, you know, speak on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, um, I think we all have different mentors at different stages of our life because we're trying to learn things we need at the time, but we're also in a different frame of mind. Um, you know, one of my my uh, most influential mentors was Robert Stuberg. He's no longer with us, but he really helped me to, you know, I had a, a period of time where my uh, financial education company was doing a couple hundred million dollars a year, and we had some major business setbacks. And, you know, he, he kind of would always just be that level headed guy that's been there and done that because he ran all of Nightingale Connett, which built the programs for Tony Robbins, Deepak, Barbara D'Angelis, all the, you know, big names, Brian Tracy. 
And he always just have a level head. So for me, I, I, I leveraged him a lot in order to make sure I clarify my thinking. You know, he would always say, you know, th this event is not, this event is only what you're perceiving it to be. You know, why can two people watch a football game and one thing, you know, a big score happens and one thinks it's horrible and one thinks it's great. It's because it's, it's the meaning we give the event. And so he was always really good at that. But I, you know, I've had a lot of mentors in my life. I've had the opportunity, like you said, to work with, you know, Tony Robbins, T. Harv Eker, um, you know, everybody from Trump to Duchess of York, David Bach, you know, all these big name thought leaders, celebrities, whatever. So I try to learn from a lot of them. That's why I've kind of kind of pulled little pieces I've learned from each. But I'll tell you one of the reasons I'm a big believer in mentors. Now, my personality is I like to get it done yesterday and I like to shortcut my success because I know there's no shortcuts, but you can shorten the process of learning because when you find a mentor, you don't got to go figure it out. They've done it. You know, most mentors, if they're good mentors, have done what you've done or they've already gone through what you've gone through. So if you can learn from them in advance, you can shorten the period of time. Right. But the other thing I found over time, because we've trained millions of people around the world, is that you get this thing called belief transference, meaning when you get a mentor that's done it, they're just more confident, they're more successful, they can navigate, but just being around them, you feel more confident. You, yeah. you get situational specific strategies, meaning if you have a mentor that's done it, whether it's fitness or money or real estate, they could say, look, this is what you do in this situation with this market, with this timing, in this way. And if you do that, boom, you got a shortcut to success. Well, the more success you have, the more your belief goes up. And the more your belief goes up, the more your confidence goes up, the more you'll do. And so you just accelerate success. So I think mentors bring not just knowledge and guidance. Like most people think of coaches and mentors as like accountability partners. They're, oh, there's that. But I think you get a lot more than just that with a mentor. So that's why I'm a big, a big fan of surrounding yourself with mentors, even if it's just, you know, podcasts online and things like that. Surround yourself mentally with the right mentors. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, I've never even really thought about like the belief or the confidence transference, like you said. But thinking back on it, like a lot of the mentors I've had, like I didn't think that I could even make online fitness coaching like a full time job and be successful. And like my, my business coach, when I first got into doing it full time, he was like, dude, you're going to explode. Like, you're going to, you're going to be making this much. And you're like, but say, say an amount. I'm like, I don't know, that just seems so out of the it yeah. was beliefs. Right. And, it's, and so, yeah. but, but yeah. You just, well, think about it. Cause they're not, it's not about confidence for them anymore. They've done it. Right. Like, it doesn't, it's not about confidence. They, they already believe it because they've seen it. Right. You just are not there. So how do you, how do you increase your belief and confidence? You get around people that are like, bro, like this is, this is a, this is a non-issue. It's a non-brainer. Let's go, you know, let's go do this, do this, this. And you do it. And you're like, holy cow, like that worked, you know? So power yes. mentors. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it with my own clients too. It's like, you know, some people, man, I, I'm just like, how do you not have confidence and see that you can do this? And then, so like, I got, I'm like, no, like if we do this, we're going to get there. Like the, to know, like you said, no brainer. Like we're, if we take these steps, we're going to get there. Right. And it's like, yeah, I, and I, I'm kind of seeing it now. I'm like seeing the parallels. <laughs> yeah, well, and a good mentor, a good mentor, because, you know, there's coaches and mentors and advisors, all these kind of different layers. But a good mentor is someone who you've got a relationship with. So they know you and they know how to take a little bit of what you've got and apply to what they already know to be the case. And right. so that's why an amazing, you know, like yourself, like with a physical or mental game, you can say, look, I know what they're struggling with but I know where the answers lie. So I'm just going to pair them together without that. That's why people just wander and try to figure it out on their own. Yeah. You got to fail faster. But the other thing is you have no way to apply things because you've never done it. At least if you're trying to do things you've never done before, which is what you ought to be doing if you want to be super successful. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And kind of what you were saying, it's like, I've had people yeah, that were successful in other areas. Like I've had people that have been super successful in their career in that, but they don't have confidence in the fitness side. I'm like, if, if we can just channel your mindset, like you've got the mindset, we've just got to put it towards fitness. Yeah. And I think it can go both ways or in other areas too, your relationships, you know, whatever it may be. So yeah, 100%. yeah for sure. Cool. Well, sweet. Um, And then, so I want to hear, cause you, we were speaking about this a little bit and I, when you were in your, in your home, last time we were talking, you had it right behind you. Um, Speak to us, kind of tell us a little bit about your 12 pillars. I'd like to know more. Oh, yeah. So um, 
You know, when I first started my personal development company, because my background was all marketing, uh, nutrition, and all you know, all, all the different you know companies and areas of things that I've been in. Yeah. But when I wanted to start a personal development podcast, the Daily Mastermind, and some of those things, I thought, okay, go back now. You you marketed for some of the biggest thought leaders, authors, experts, celebrities. Like, go just make a list, and I just listed all the principles I've kind of learned, and and I whittled it down and narrowed it down to twelve specific. I didn't make them up. They're just time-tested principles that I believe are success principles that I believe will build a foundation for your success. So I took those 12 and I made a poster out of it. I did that kind of for me. You know, I wanted to have something I could use as a daily affirmation. But the more I worked with it and the more I trained with it, the more I realized that these are principles that you just have to have to be successful long-term. And they apply to every area of your life. So, you know, if you want, I can kind of go through them real quick here these these 12 but man they're they're killer core principles i think you can use in any area of your life yeah i'd love to i'd love to hear i'd love to cool. hear yeah so so um and it's funny because i always have like on my wall and on my computer like i always have my poster and so you know if you look at these principles they start out with you know i create my life um you have to take responsibility for creating your life if you're one of those people that think life happens to you it's always going to happen to you yeah. if you create your life that means you do the things you're resp you know you're the one who's going to set the stage create the daily rituals the yeah. second one is i take personal responsibility yeah. so prosperity pill pillar 2 is i take personal responsibility because no one's coming to help you no i mean they might help you but they're not going to they're not going to make sure you get where you need to be but there's an empowering part that comes along with taking responsibility. When you take responsibility for your life and you say, I'm taking responsibility, now you're empowered to do something. Yeah. If you feel like it's happening to you, you'll never be able to do that. Um, the third pillar is probably my favorite. I act in spite of my mood because successful people don't do things when they feel like it, I love right? That. Nobody feels like getting out of bed to work out. Nobody feels like doing an extra rep. Nobody feels like going home and working on their side hustle to get out of their job. Nobody feels like giving that extra time to their relationship when they you know, are tired. But successful people act in spite of their mood. The next pillar is I surround myself with positive people. Now, I, I kind of played around with it a little bit because I was listening to a lot of the different people I'd worked with. Do I surround myself with successful people? Well, there's a lot of successful people that aren't that happy, right? I wanted to surround myself with positive people because I think it attracts that abundant mentality. It attracts you know, success and motivation and confidence and all that. So you are the average of the people you surround yourself with. And if you don't surround yourself with positive people, you'll never be successful. Yeah. Um, the next pillar was I focus on solutions. That's a big one because most of us, by default, when we have a problem, we're trying to solve the problem, but you're focused on the problem. Mm -hmm. And you can't find solutions when you're focused on the problem. You have to think abundantly. What are solutions to solve the problem. It's, it's, it's semantics, but it's not. So when you focus on solutions, you're finding things that will help fix your problem in an abundant mindset, not in a scarcity mindset, which is where we are when we're solving most problems, right? So, um, you know, I focus on solutions. I create an attitude of abundance is the next one. You spoke to this. It is no question going to influence probably every area of your life. If you can create an attitude of abundance, you're going to have more solutions. You're going to have a winner attitude. You know, you're going to attract things into your life you need. Um, then the next pillar was I choose to be happy. Now that was a tough one, especially if you're struggling. People are like, man, you think happiness is a choice? Yeah, it is. Because even if you don't believe it, um, you know, there are times in your life when you're happy. It's not a destination. It's yeah. you can be happy. You can choose to be happy. And that just gives you that positive filter on life. Um, now, I've been doing a lot of business, and so I really liked the next principle, which was I always think win-win, because I learned, and I, I kind of learned this, uh, you know, I, I used to do a lot of stuff with Trump uh, when they, they spoke for us and things like this, and some of his family, it's like always negotiating. And when you're negotiating, um, like some of the guys that he had at his organization, you always think like you got to come out on top. Right. But I, I really believe that there's always a win-win. And yeah. when you think win-win, you're going to find wins for both parties. When you think win-lose, that's the way unsuccessful people think. And so I think that's just an attitude you carry into business, into financial, into wealth. When you think there's always a, a win for both, you're going to be more successful. Yeah. Um, I'm committed to lifelong learning. We talked about that a little bit. 
Um, learning is not just getting the knowledge, it's applying the knowledge. And that's why it's a lifelong thing, lifelong learning. You're evolving all the time. Even when you get to a point where you're, you, you feel like you got your fitness down, you know, you, you learn new things, your body evolves. And so you got to be a lifelong learner, um, which leads to the other pillar, which is I create daily rituals. Um, that's number, uh, number nine or number 10. And then that's one's like self-explanatory, right? Daily rituals are going to create your success. Right. Um, the 11th pillar is I attract success. It's that abundant mindset, but it's something you got to believe. You really got to core believe you attract success into your life. You do have opportunities. You will find things. And the last one is I visualize and manifest my life. And I tell you, I kind of struggled with that one a little because I was never like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real detail strategy guy. I'm not a, you know, woo woo kind of, you know, attract and visualize things, but you know, we all have this inner world and outer world. And if you can't visually create clarity around what you want, what you want to look like, what you want to feel like, what you want to have in your life, you can't accomplish it. You right. can't accomplish something you haven't visualized first. And, and I added visualize and manifest because you've got to do the work um, once you do it. So those are the 12 pillars. I know that was kind of super fast if you have questions and things, but I felt like they're not everything, but they, they really were a core foundation for me. And that's why I also use them as an affirmation every day. I tell myself they're all in first person. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is how I do it. And I think if you have those pillars, you know, you're going to win. Like you're going to win overall. So anyway. I love those, man. There's, I'd resonate with each of those. I wish I could, that, that's a lot to just kind of unpack right after all that. But um, one that stood out to me and it's something that I feel like has come up with on, on like every guest I've had on here is the happiness one. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's not, and I've said this, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but guys, like, I feel like you got to hear this. Sometimes you got to, you got to be reminded more than you got to learn things completely new sometimes, but it's like, it really isn't about like, when I get the house, I'm going to be happy when I get the car, you know, when I get, when I get my six pack, I'm going to be happy. It's, it's like, it's the choice right now. And it's like being happy is, is a state. I think it's more of a state and a choice than it is like uh, yeah. something when you, when you achieve something, you get that. Right. So. 100%. No, you hit it a hundred percent, man. It's a state of mind, but it's also you choose. Remember you create your life. You choose the definition you have. If you define happiness as when I get the car or when I get the job or when I'm making a million dollars, then you're never going to be happy. Um, the sad thing is if you do finally get that, um, you're going to realize that you're not happy. It's like most of these like super, super all-star athletes that win the Super Bowl, kick the winning field goal, and then they're depressed the next day. Happiness is a choice because you can create that state at any time. You know, it's just an emotion. Like you can, so when you define happiness a different way, happiness is like, I like instead of achieving happiness, happily achieving, yeah. right? So it's better to just have that state and that definition be when I'm progressing, I'm happy. When I'm doing what I love, I'm happy. When I accomplish my morning rituals, I'm happy. You know, you, you've just got to define it. The problem is most of us define success as a destination right. and that's the problem but you can, you're right. It's a state you've got to just create and cultivate in your life. And when you're around people, like people that are with your, your clients and things, they probably feel better when they're with you when they're working out, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's something you can do when you get around people that are the right people as well. Yeah. And your answer there made me remember what I was going to ask earlier, thankfully. So okay. um, like, you know, sometimes I come across people and they're like, I'm completely satisfied with where I'm at fitness wise or whatever. And I'm someone where I'm always trying to level up. Like, even if the progress is slow, I want to be progressing. Cause I think even Tony Robbins says this, like progress is happiness or happiness is progress. Right. So like, wh what would you say to someone? And I've, I've asked this before, but you know, I, I'd like to get your take on it, your perspective. What would you say to someone who's maybe complacent or they're just like, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at, whether it's their with their finances or even like, I would say with their relationship, like I'm, I'm always trying to level up everything um yeah. so what would you say to someone like that who's just like yeah i'm good where i'm at i don't need any guidance i don't need any any progress you know i'm good yeah. well i mean you can't you, you 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 can lead a horse to water you can't make him drink right but i i what i've learned over time working with hundreds of thousands of people at our events millions that we've we've been around but i've worked with all of them is that most people are they're full of BS. First of all, they're not happy. They're just using that as an excuse. Right. And they're, they're trying to justify in their own mind that they're okay because they want to be happy. They're just not content with where they're at. And so you got to recognize when people really are and really aren't because very few people, I, I believe you're right. Tony says it best is like, you know, progress is, it creates happiness. 
and when you're stagnant and you're not where you want to be. And so it, you got to cut through that first, but you know, Ed Milet made a comment I really liked and I've kind of adopted it and it's called blissful dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with most high achievers is they, 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 they're not going to be happy until they hit something. Right. And so they may get to a point in their life where they're like, I'm so tired of not getting there. I'm measuring where I haven't gotten rather than where I have gotten. And so it's hard. They, they have this zero sum game. I'm either happy or I'm not happy. I think when you learn that you can be blissfully dissatisfied with where you're at, meaning you want growth, you always want to get better, but that doesn't mean you're not happy with who you are. Right. And we're not talking about that. People will be like, look, I'm not, you're perfect just how you are physically you're great, but that doesn't mean you can't be better. And you can't, there, no one can argue to me that they won't feel better if they're in better condition shape, right? Now, if you're talking to an all-star athlete, that's like got 4% body fat, they're eating right, they're like, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. um, but you could be completely healthy, like an Olympic athlete and not be happy either. So blissful dissatisfaction is, is the way I found most entrepreneurs and high achievers can grasp both. Cause it's hard to say, well, if I'm happy now, then I'm I'm content. That could that could keep me from being my aggressive self. But if I wait till then, I'm not happy now. No, you can be blissfully dissatisfied and have both. That's that's just kind of the way I've looked at it. When people bring it up, so you got to cut back to: Are they really being honest with themselves, and then, or are they just struggling with the the, the true meaning of it? Yeah, I really like that perspective because yeah, it's like you can be happy with you, right? You, and you can be happy in general. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't strive for more, right? You can, you can be happy. You can be blissful while you're progressing. And it doesn't yeah. mean, you know, I'm just okay. I don't need to work hard because <laughs> the, you know, yeah. that would be super boring. Right. So, well, so most of my, most of my growing up, I was a top sales guy, top manager, top CEO of a company, da, da, da. I was chasing success yeah. and I never quite felt happy. It was Robert Stuberg who said to me, you have to learn to disconnect the two. Happiness and success are not the same thing. They're just two different things. You could be really high here and okay here. You could be really high with happiness and not with success, but you have to learn to disconnect it too. Now it's a lifelong battle, man. I struggle with it even today, right? But it's, it's when you're aware that they're not connected, then you can manage them a little bit better. And I think it's personal development and personal growth. So I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah, Definitely. And I, that's why this podcast is called the Elevate Everyday Podcast, because mm -hmm. like if you're just trying to elevate yourself every day, then that progress, like the striving for more, striving for being the best you, you can be like the self mastery, like you're saying, that's when you're going to feel fulfilled. And it's it's almost like the anticipation of of whatever goals you're chasing is actually sometimes more fulfilling than than when you like when you say when you actually achieve it, it also yeah. sometimes sometimes depressing. It's like, almost like I achieved it. Now what? And it's like, you kind of go into this dip, right? So it's, it's actually a lot of times the anticipation and just trying to strive for more that's actually fulfilling makes you feel happy is what I've found. Well, and it's back to what you said about stacking wins. I mean, the bottom line is when you're stacking wins, you feel successful, you'll feel happy. You know, you, it's just how you track it and how you build it and how you grow with it. Because, you know, all these principles kind of blend together but happiness can be achieved when you're stacking wins and you're around the right people and you're doing your daily rituals and you're like, you can be happy, but you have to make the choice. That's why I put in there because we know that everybody knows that, but you could be stacking wins and all these things. But if you don't choose to identify that that makes you happy, then you're never going to be. So happiness really is a choice. That's why I put it in there as a key principle. Sure. Yeah, and I wanted to touch on, I, I just thought of another question that I want to throw a curveball at you in a second here, um, but I wanted to touch on one of the other pillars and it's taking ownership because I think that's a huge one. It's one that resonated with me hard this weekend uh, because I, I made a stupid mistake. Uh, long story short, I waited for two hours for an appointment that I had um, and I didn't have the confirmation of the order. For, for this appointment that I had. And so I waited two hours and had to go back home without getting what I needed to get done. Uh, I could have let, I could have let it ruin my day, you know, could have let it ruin my Saturday and, uh, and just be like, man, like I'm pissed that, that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Um, but honestly, like I could have controlled certain variables. I could have made sure and confirmed that I, that I got the order processed for the appointment that I had. Um, I could have, you know, controlled and just like been more aware, um, about scheduling the appointment. I, like there were things in my control. So, 
you know, when you think about it like that and you take full ownership, whether it's the good or the bad, you know, I, I think, like you said, you've got more control over your life. You're not giving power to someone else or something else. Right. So like, yeah, take- well, you, you, first of all, I, I acknowledge that you are using those principles. Cause remember like the very fact that you're even thinking that way, yeah. means you, you're you're in control of your life right so if you're even thinking like what could i have done better that that means you're already winning you're winning yeah you're winning that's a win most people don't stack that win the yeah. fact that you acknowledge that the other thing is that you can choose how you make learn from it right it's not a it's not a downside it's a learning thing you could and then most importantly you can choose and you control and you own the meaning you give the event. That is the key for most everything. So you can give that meaning a doesn't matter. I'm moving forward, rock and roll. Or it could be like, huh, now I'm going to, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Or, but you choose the meaning. So you own the meaning. You can't control if somebody stands you up. You can't control if you miscommunicate. You can, it's already gone. It's in the past, but you control the perspective you do and what you're going to do about it. And that is the piece that's empowering, I think. People need to realize that stuff's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. And you, the meaning you give it, you get to control. What you do about it, you get to control. And how you view it, you know, like overall, you control. And so that's, that's just, it is an empowering thing to have that. But you have to have ownership of your life to have that perspective. So you're right. Yeah, 100%. And it just it gives you power to think that way, which um, sometimes I think people think the opposite. They think like taking ownership is going to give away power but it, it gives you power in situations like this even when it's bad things right yeah. so you can yeah. that perspective um but yeah so the curveball yeah. i'm going to throw out to you this is one of the questions uh that that i really had planned but it's just something i see <laughs> online um about escaping the matrix so <laughs> what what's your perspective and i don't know if you've looked into it much just like i feel like it's thrown out there a lot but what's your perspective on escaping the matrix in like how do you think someone can escape the matrix in today's world? Which I think what they mean by that when people are saying this online is like, you know, escape in the rat race, escape in the nine to five. Um, how, how can people kind of escape, you know, just barely making it by and kind of escape the matrix in today's world? Yeah. You know, I think there's a couple meanings that, 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 that has out there. One is people just, they don't like their reality. They don't like their life. And I think there, and I want to address both because I think, when people want to escape their life, they're not taking responsibility for their life. When you want to escape the matrix, it's because, you know, look, successful people don't want to quit their job. They just want to make, they want to create something else that makes them so much freaking money. They can't afford to work there. There's a difference. People that are unsuccessful want to quit their job. So they can go do this. They don't realize a business is going to take you 10 times more effort. Right. (laughs) In fact, most successful people that are investing, they want to keep that job because they want to put that money into buying more investments. So, You just got to be careful that you're not trying to escape the matrix because you don't like your reality, right? And then the second thing is, how do you escape the matrix? Meaning, how do you, you know, create a better life? Like you're being proactive. Well, the first and most important thing you got to realize is that you, you don't have to escape any matrix. You just got to create your own, you got to create your inner world, outer world experience. You know, most successful people I know, they don't, stuff around them doesn't, doesn't mess them up. Yeah. The people that need to escape everything around them are the people that let the other stuff around them bug them and 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 create their life. Most successful people, they're not worried about their competition. They're aware of it, but they don't have competition. You know, they it's all those things. So I want to I want to make sure people are really clear why they want to escape the matrix and then realize that it's very empowering to say, I can make this decision and do it now. Create the vision of what you want to do. It doesn't matter what the matrix is doing. And then, you know, obviously, most importantly, if that does come down to, okay, how do I do it? What do I do? Tactical strategy, that kind of thing. Well, then I think the very first thing you got to do is you've got to find what you love doing and go out and try and try and try, try new things, get new things. If you don't know where to start, you just got to go start trying stuff. You'll figure out pretty quick what you're good at, what you're not good at. But most people haven't tried anything. They're so in their rut. They haven't done anything out there. And so they're in their own little bubble. And so those are just some of my thoughts on that. I mean, completely off the top of my head, but yeah, I don't know. I like that. I like that. And I think kind of where my mind went with that is like, and it's not something I've looked into the matrix. I don't even really know what it means when people are saying that, but, but yeah, I think your perspective um, is kind of in line with what I was thinking. Um, But yeah, I almost feel like the matrix is your comfort zone and it, it's, it feels comfortable there. And it's like just enough to get by. 
Um, but escaping that is you don't realize it's it's probably going to be more uncomfortable than what you're doing. But like on the other side of that is is what you're looking for. If well, you yeah, if you think of the movie, The Matrix, and that's the whole point here, is that The Matrix was designed to control everything you do. You think you're living your life, like most people right now think they're living their life, but the stuff they're listening to, the people they're around, the, 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 the government agent, you know, all, all the stuff that's influencing you, but you have to just choose, take, you know, are you the blue or the red pill, right? You have to choose that you're going to unplug from all the stuff that's creating your life and create your own life period. Right. And it's a decision. So I think ultimately that's what they're kind of referring to is like, you know, you, 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 your life is being manipulated and it is, there is no question your life is being, because here's the thing, even if you're not doing personal development and you're not doing the things you want, make no mistake, you're evolving into something, someone's shaping you. It's either you or your environment, the matrix, right. Yeah. Is creating you as an individual because yeah. subconsciously you are picking everything up and you're learning habits and you're growing to be a certain way and you do certain things. And it's not because you're choosing it. It's because you're being programmed. Right. Everyone's being programmed. And that's right. the problem. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, being, question, man. you're being manipulated either way. Like it's, yep. it's, <laughs> you know, so, and, and one thing kind of resonating <clears throat> with that is, you know, some people have told me I've basically, you know, been naive. Like I, I don't pay attention to the news. I I've kind of honestly, like I'll, I'll be honest, like I, I've created my own reality, but, <laughs> but I, I'm purposefully doing that. Cause I, I, I can't listen to some things that are going on in society. Like when quarantine was going on, yeah, I, that's when my, my business flourished. That's when I started doing online hundred percent. And that's what, you know, the rest is history. It's like when certain things happen, I feel like you can either crumble from certain things that's going on, or you can create your own reality, pivot, adapt, um, and create, you know, your own reality and, and kind of like be in your own matrix, like you're saying. So yeah. that, that's what well, it's not to say, look, I mean, we're, we're, we're smart guys. Like it's, it's yeah. not to say things aren't going to affect you. Right. They will affect you. But, you know, most of us pick up 90% of our subconscious mind that we're picking up is the stuff that we don't control. It's scrolling social media. It's watching Netflix. It's, you know, these programs, this news program, these movies, like if you're not controlling what's coming in, it's programming you. That's yes. why it's called television programming. Like right. it's programming you. <laughs> um, so you have to be proactive. And, you know, I agree with you. I think that um, a lot of people I know were really successful during the pandemic because they made a decision. Their environment wasn't going to control their future. For sure. Man, really powerful stuff, man. Wow. Well, one thing I alluded to it earlier, like what would you want to challenge the listeners on the Elevate Everyday podcast to not just listen to, but right after listening to this, like put into practice and take action on right away? What's one thing you'd like to challenge the listeners to do? Well, you know, since I believe so much in mindset and I'll, and I'll, I'll say, cause it's always a little different for people depending on their circumstances, but I think I would like to just piggyback what you said. One of the big, big things is if your mindset's going to create, if your thoughts create your life, where do our thoughts come from? Well, they come from the, the questions we ask ourselves, the activities we do, that's what create our thoughts. So I love the idea that if you were to pick one thing out of this, it's go start stacking those wins, yeah. stacking the wins to create the best version of yourself. Um, and, and, you know, you've just got to be conscious and aware of your life. Um, but I really like that you brought that up because that's a way to start. It'll affect your confidence. It'll affect your happiness. It'll affect your mindset. It'll affect your growth. If you can learn to train your mind, that's the more important part here, not just stacking wins, but train your mind to start seeing the wins. If you do that, you're going to get more confident. You're going to get more belief. You're going to get outside your comfort zone. You're going to know you can do more. So stacking the wins and, and training your mind to, to look for successes, I think is a big one. That's a big one. I, and I appreciate you bringing that up. I love it. Awesome, George. Man, thank you so much, man. What, what's, That's fun. what's next for you, George? Like, what are you working on? Like, what, what can you kind of get the, the listeners excited about and, and where can they find you as well? Well, you know, as you know, I kind of told you this, like I, I really haven't done anything outside companies that I own up until this point um, in my podcast and my personal development. It, it's never been about the money ever, but I found the need and I've been asked many, many times to create um, more group mentoring and things like that. So we are launching a, a mastermind Academy nice. and um, you know, I'm excited about that because I think there's a power in the actual group, the masterminding 
And so, you know, that's that for me is a big one because you can get mentoring, but when you also get the collaboration, it's the whole reason. I mean, think about it. I have worldwide tra uh, trademarks on the Daily Mastermind for a reason. Napoleon Hill talked about the mastermind is two or more people working in the spirit of harmony, common goal, right? So when you get that group, you get that third, you get, it's not one plus one anymore. You get that third component of the group that brings this abundant mentality, pushing people forward. So that's my big, my big push where the mastermind has been a personal project of mine and something I just love doing. I love hundreds of thousands of downloads. I, I do it for my own daily rituals. Um, we're looking to build one of the largest entrepreneur masterminds in the world. Um, we will do it. We've got the, the connections and contacts, relationships, um, always meeting individuals like yourself. So that's my, that's my big focus now. So. Badass. Man, I love that. Yeah. I, I completely agree in the power of community with like masterminds. That's why um, we call ourselves the fitness junkies, the group that I've created, the kind of community with, with the, with fitness junkie training. Um, so yeah, the fitness junkies, like it, it's just, it's huge. You feed off of the wins, like sharing the wins and going back to what I said about um, my, my business mentor, he also had a group and that was a big part of seeing other people do the things that I didn't believe was even possible. Right. And then seeing that from uh, that other people, like my peers, it's like that peer accountability. It's a whole different you know, it's one of the strongest forms of accountability is that peer accountability, not just the mentorship accountability. So I think that's a big part of it. That That's exciting, man. I'm yeah, excited. well, and you, you hit another thing that, you know, people don't think about. And that is when you're in a group setting and you see other people struggling through problems, you now can learn how to deal with those prior to you having the problem. So it's not just about someone who's been through the problems you're dealing with. It's about having the community of people that are dealing with problems that you can learn from in advance. So- right. Power of community is so huge, man. And, and I love what you're doing, man. You got you got you got some great stuff going. And I'm a big believer that if you move the body, the mind's gonna follow. So that's cool. I, I I'm looking forward to watching what you got happening. I know we're gonna be collaborating on other stuff. So I love that. Awesome. Sweet George. Man, I, I'm excited. Man, I'd love to hopefully have you on in the future, maybe even do some more collaborations with you. And I I love your energy. I appreciate it. I think we resonated a lot. I know the listeners got a lot out of this, guys, but like we talked about, you know, don't just listen put it into practice right away, guys. Um, but I appreciate you being on George. Um, I appreciate you listeners for tuning in. You know, your attention is probably your most valuable asset. So we appreciate your attention guys. Um, you know, put this stuff into practice right away. Stay tuned for expert guests every single week, smash the subscribe button guys for those week weekly expert guests. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode, but in the, in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thank you guys. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.